Hey Rutendo, how are you doing? I am excellent and sleeping. Yeah, but it's like... Excellent and sleeping. <laughs> so just like in that one word, I'm good. So good. It's an interesting contrast. Yeah. <laughs> so you know how they say, uh, you know how they say that you can be, and people love to like throw this around, yeah. um, that you can be a work of art or a masterpiece at the same time. So yeah. that, that's yeah, me. Both things hey, are true. That's me today. <laughs> a work, or, work so in let's, progress. Let's, let's, try and, let's try and make sure we go through this without actually making you fall asleep. Like, I think we can do that. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> but if we do fall asleep, we'll just say it's part of the experience. And just like hope for the concept interview. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but yeah. Breaking new ground. Breaking new ground, <laughs> always, but we'll be good. So I'm I'm talking to you today because and and you do a lot of things. So some people might actually realize you might actually recognize you from Meet the CEO, where you're yeah. a presenter. Mm -hmm. So this is me flipping the script on you. You tend to be the one asking people questions. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's interesting um, in that. This interview should have started like 30 minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I kept on asking you questions because I think once you get into a role where you're interviewing people and I love, I love hearing stories yeah. as I love telling stories. So every time I meet someone, I'm always so interested. So like, curious, oh. isn't it? So, so what did you drink today? Oh, do you like yogurt? Or do you like ice cream? So the thing is, I'm, I'm just always interested. I'm interested in people. Yeah. Um, and so that, that comes off in, in different ways. The side that we're going to focus on more, which is uh, Rutendo the artist. Well, I mean, being a presenter is in some ways uh, art. It's, it's a very creative craft, right? Uh, yep. People just maybe don't classify it as that. But uh, we're going to focus more on the spoken word. Um, you have a recently released, is recent a fair? I think recent is fair. I think fair, recent right? is fair. Um, August 31st. It's literally uh, a month. And the way like time was moving fast. It feels like two weeks ago. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you recently um, released a spoken word album, mm -hmm. um, a fusion of spoken word and, and music. Uh, it goes oh. by the title Mukundi. Yes, Mukundi. EP. Yep. So the thing is also, you know, a lot of people calling yeah. it an album, people are calling it an EP. It's an yeah. EP, right? Yeah. But then, then people, then have people saying, dude. Like, so that's actually what I was going to ask you right now because I, I was in a group the other day and we, we were failing at making this uh, distinction. Right. And I remember I actually said, you guys can call it whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call it whatever I want, <laughs> which is not really fair, right? Okay. But please tell me, what is the distinction? Maybe now I'll treat it with the like respect it, it deserves. You know what? Uh, to be fair, yeah. from what I was told, yeah. um, an EP is a selection of a number of tracks. Yeah. On one instance, an EP could be five or less songs, yeah. um, and others can be like up to 30. But what an oh. artist does in an EP is they put so many different genres or so many different sounds. So it doesn't have that uniformity, that uh, a thematic uniformity oh, that you would call an, an album. album. Yeah, the and the thing is, okay. it's, it's okay. you are also figuring out, you're finding your voice, right? So usually, back in the day, they they would start with an EP yeah. to introduce you to like the market or the industry, yeah. and then as you find your voice, so they're like, because even if you listen to Mukundi, there's a Bila that's going there, then there's jazz yeah. there, then there's all <laughs> there's there. So many yeah, there's like it's like a licorice, all sorts and, going and in, right? As well. yeah, yeah, so the apana like the thread. Yeah. Thread. So that's what my understanding of EP versus album, album. is. So we'll yeah. probably get eventually to, <laughs> to an album. Um, but yeah, it was more of an um, experiment. There's extended play yeah. or long play. Remember long play? LP. Those yeah, LPs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, extended okay. play is what it means. But don't ask me like stuff the like technical. that. So I'll just say <laughs> EP to me is experimental play. So I was experimenting with a lot. Yeah. That's cool. Um, we'll, we'll call it an EP. We'll do, let's go with that um, okay. because another thing that we also said in that group chat is um, let's also just respect what the artist is calling the work, right? There's, right. Like you said, it's, it's, it's called that for a reason. There's like an intentionality 
uh, yes. behind that, right? Sure. And so... Well, I mean, I received the album prophecy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Take it. You chug your seed. Put it there. I'm looking forward to that because this was... Uh, I, and I remember... Um, I, I said to you, I'll listen, I'll listen to this and I'll, and I'll give you feedback when I do, which was maybe a few weeks ago. And then... Um, my schedule has been extremely hectic. I only managed right. to do it, I think, two weeks ago, a fortnight ago. Yeah. And then I got back to you and I was like, yo, this is crazy, crazy good. Thank you. <laughs> like, this is really good. Um, I was blown away. Um, your, your delivery, the messaging, the music, like, everything just, like, came together. It doesn't Thank feel you. experimental. Really? Is what I'm saying. Thank yeah, you it doesn't that. feel experimental. It feels very tight. Thank you. Like in the literal sense, not in the colloquial, this is tight. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but in put together, that's Thank what you. I'm trying to say, right? Mm-hmm. Um, let's start at the name, right? Uh, yeah. Mukundi. Do you come up with the name before the mm-hmm. EP or does that come up after you've made the stuff? And what yeah. does, like, why is it important? Why was it important so, to call it Mukundi? That's a very good question because two of the songs, yeah. actually no, yeah, yeah, one song, um, Until We Honor the Mothers, I'd yeah. actually recorded it two years ago. Oh, for real? Um, mm, two years ago. So in my head, I've always wanted to do an EP. So Mukundi is actually the summation of 11 years of yeah. life experiences. Yeah. So 11 years of, like a cycle of experiences like mashed up into like what, 25 minutes? Yeah. Um, so before what we did Until We Honor the Mothers initially, yeah. the EP at that time was actually going to be called The Awakening. That was the initial name, The Awakening. Yeah. Because at that time, um, I felt that there was an awakening that was happening in the world, yeah. um, particularly for Africans. For what myself? time is this, please? Just maybe a range years around. Two time? years ago. What year are you now? Twenty twenty two. So twenty twenty, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah twenty twenty. And did yeah. Um, I think yeah, twenty twenty. Everybody thought that you know, oh, there's a shift. There's something's and happening. And then boom, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> um. So that's 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 what it was. And then fast forward to uh, this year. Um, yeah. I'm a recipient of the British Council Scripts and Bars Grant. Yeah, and for me, that, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, you know what they say? Well, I don't know if you know it, but there's this saying that says, prepare for what you prayed for. Um, and for me, yeah. putting together a body of work is something that I've always wanted to do. And it's always something I wanted to do properly. And so when I worked the math of what it would cost me yeah. by myself, I couldn't afford it. Yeah. Then this opportunity came. And so I was like, Ish, okay, ooh, what am I going to talk about? First of all. Secondly... Also, I got to a stage of unpacking my life and I realized that, oh, actually, um, I've been through a lot. Yeah. But then at the same time, it's one thing to share your story. I believe that it's also important to dovetail the experiences of what's happening in your generation or at that moment or season. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so before I even titled the album Mukundi, yeah. um, there was a creative exercise that i was selected to be a part of yeah. and what it was was they would fuse spoken word so it was scripts and bars was administered by k media africa in partnership with page poetry alive which i'm a resident poet um represent radio which is in the united kingdom so they yeah. wanted to f- see what we could creatively come up with collaborating spoken word somebody doing a beat or an instrumentation mm-hmm. somebody doing the graphics animation right um and then somebody in the uk doing vocals so they just kind of like put all your hat your names and hat and be like ah, group one this is what you're doing oh, okay and so on that project um the song we did was called going higher and then the spoken word that i wrote for that um so the the the, the essence of the song is oh you okay, keep going higher regardless of what you're going through right mm-hmm. and so then i came in with the shauna part and I said something along the lines, Kuti, sometimes, you know, Chema, no Kuti Ruendo, Runo, Ruendo, Runo Rema, I see Motu Mandiri, um, just the fire within me keeps on burning, and it, yeah. um, basically, and I said, Mukundi we Ruendo, right? And it sounded so dope. Yeah. So then I quickly <laughs> changed, I was like, no, actually, 
um, going to be Mukundi, right? Yeah. Um, and then I started doing research for the EP, received the grant, started doing research. Um, and part of my research was National Gallery Zimbabwe, 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 Norton, and Nyabaza and Rusape, because I'm Manyika, right? Yeah. So even now doing the, the, the research about the importance of ancestry, realizing the importance of a name. So now if I wanted to honor my ancestors, they would be like, Mukundi, Mukundi. Oh, we don't know who that is, <laughs> right? When, yeah. when you were introduced to us, we know that and so that's why I then reverted to using my full mm -hmm. Rumende name, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Without a shadow of doubt, because there are other Rutendo Mutsamunas, but I'm the only Rutendo, Denise Mutsamuna. Um, and so then, instead of calling myself Mukundi, I then entitled the EP ah. Mukundi, ah, okay. which means okay. um, overcomer yeah. or victor, yeah. which is what I believe I am. And then at the same time, I also realized that I don't think Zimbabweans realize that Tiriwa Kundi on the magnitude that we have. We just kind of, we just yeah. just keep on We're going. Too busy. We're yeah. not like really paying attention to that, is What? It? Do you know how amazing we are? <laughs> it's also... <laughs> Well, at least I know for myself. Yeah. So I'm hoping that um, the work that I will do will, you know, either plant seeds in people's minds or at least be the water. Kanaku Sakura, I could not bad setup for them to uh, wake up to the enormity of who they are. Yeah, I hear that. And mm. that's, that's, really, that's really powerful. And <clears throat> I do think, um, in my experience, and this is not just to like gas you up, <laughs> Yeah. In my experience, I so. actually felt that because like I was saying to you, um, it's such a, a personal body of work. It's such a, a, a body of work that has so many challenging themes, right? It's yeah. um, how we uh, treat women in the world until we honor our mothers. Um, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Those are like very, almost like controversial topics yes. when they shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's our culture they right. shouldn't really be things that are taboo so, so. It, for me that was the thing is it challenged me on on so many uh levels my memo uh the, the yeah. loved ones we all have love yeah. issues. everyone here and there you know <laughs> goes through sure. something so it was so like relatable sure. but it I, I don't know how to like put it in words perfectly but i think you you did manage to to achieve what you what you set out to achieve right thank you and so let's start with, you know, we're not going to go track by track. Right. But we're going to, like, address the elephant in the proverbial room, which is, <laughs> which is what? The, the first track. Um, yes. um, I was listening to the EP. Um, and, that's track, and that's track number one. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't ease you into it, it right? It really challenges like, you. Because <laughs> it's one of those things where, and, and like I'm saying, uh, in our culture, it's almost taboo to explore that side of our yeah. culture. So it almost becomes a take it or leave it experience because yep. after that first track, either I'm going to be like, ah, I've heard Zimu's like a duck and like play, press pause. Yep. Or it's going to challenge me and I'm going to be like, okay, maybe it's I'm a bit uncomfortable, but let's yeah. hear the rest of this message. And, and I it's love that. Long. It's and like, I a, love it's like almost it's seven six, minutes. Six minutes something, right? Yeah, it's so long. long. <laughs> but I did love that, like, that statement of intent. Why yeah. did you put that as number one when you... Because I know you, I know for a fact that you know it could like chase people away from the EP. Yeah. And the thing is also, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because the EP is for who it's for, right? Yeah. Um, and how can I say I love and honor my ancestors and then have them as the last track? Where's the honor? <laughs> where's the honor in that? Yeah. Um, and even where's the honor in it being like a two second item and you know yeah. the thing with the song we did the listening party for the ep on the 31st of october yeah i did Mudzimwangu Dineda on the saturday night in yeah. one take so it was intense 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 <laughs> intense and i even asked my ancestors i was like i'm sorry uh, and the thing is i'm prayerful right i believe yeah. in god yeah. and even this journey for me started this year in may this year right yeah. And so I was like, I even, I remember, um, I got there on Saturday, things were so hectic, and I was like, I'm better, right? Yeah. And I was like, um, I'm sorry, Pumba, because um, the thing is, we all have got maternal and paternal ancestors, so I acknowledged my maternal and my paternal ancestors on both sides, on both sides yeah. right? 
Um, and then I also acknowledge the ancestors of this nation, right? And I'm like, thank you for whatever it is that you guys enjoyed for me to get to this moment because a dream is coming true for me. And if a dream has come true for me, I am not who I am without your input. Yeah. So please, can you tune me? Who you want me to talk about? <laughs> like, use me. I'm your vessel, right? To say what it is that needs to be said, right? Yeah. <sighs> Pinup studio, right? <laughs> um, and my father used to work at National Archives. And the irony of all of this is that both of my parents taught Shona, but they never taught us about Chiwana. I grew up in a Christian family, yeah. born and baptized Anglican. Then went through a season of going into like all of these different prophetic ministries, right? Yeah. But also there's that spiritual hunger and you're trying to find yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's yeah. what and even if you can hear it's so raw because i'm saying um and each other and it and each other semi because you know when you talk about like what the most like oh yeah. leprosy right <laughs> um and nobody's ever done it with that reverence yeah and, and, and to be fair it's yeah. something that could really isolate you isn't it because yes. if we're in a room of 10 um the one person who's going to be loud about ancestry and stuff like that yeah. you're going to be side-eyed by like everyone in that room so most many. on most occasions and especially on my and especially on my side right yeah because i think my social media has become more i don't post as much but before i used to spend and the thing is even the stance that i've taken a lot of people are like what does this mean? What's in the water? It is. It is. It is. It is. Right? In the mountain, mutoko. Listen, I'll be fasting and praying for three days. Yeah. On just. Ooh. Okay. So that water. contrast. So that it's, it's like, like you're swinging. In. It's almost for people who are watching. It's almost like you're swinging from one extreme yeah. to another because. I think in some ways, people actually almost uh, think of uh, ancestry as being evil. Yes. So you're going from like the good like, side to... <laughs> like, where did you go wrong? <laughs> what happened? Like, and you're just like, when did you... <laughs> what did we not see coming? Yeah. It's like, okay, Saka, Saka Deliverance Ministry, told me to say, Munui, right? Uh, I mean, people used to call me prophetess, right? I'm very intuitive. So, I mean, I, I do have the gift of, I believe everyone has got the gift of prophecy. Maraga yeah. Bamunu is the gift of prophecy. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, unfortunately, these are very difficult conversations. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, it's also not imposing my beliefs. And the thing is, there's a difference between honoring and worshiping. Yeah. There is no <laughs> way that I'm like, I don't believe in God. God, you are nothing. I'm everything I am because yeah. of God. And I believe that also I am an instrument to people having these uncomfortable conversations. conversations. So this is even before like my, my walk in, in, in trying to understand me, not even like a part of me, yeah. me. And it, I'm in studio. Um, and usually I'll hear a beat, then I'll write to it there and then. So as I'm writing until we honor the mothers, this is round about the time when... There are conversations about the Mbiyane and uh, statue, right? Yeah. And this is going to sound a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit woo-woo <laughs> for certain people. Yeah. But um, as I was writing, I had like a nudge with the papa. You know, at this part, um, it, it definitely was not coming for me because I was, I was not about those vibes back yeah. then. <clears throat> the dry bones are rising again. I'm like, pardon me. <laughs> uh, that's a bit uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in, in translation, that is That's what it's Angu, a a Chamuka, Chamuka, right? which is, what, like what? you're saying, a really, some people would perceive that to be a really crazy and bold thing to say. Yes, but then the <laughs> thing is also, if you look at it from a biblical perspective, in yeah. Ezekiel, and it, yeah. these bones shall rise. Why are we afraid of the parts of us who make us who we are? You can't, we can't run away from the fact that we're Shona. Yeah. We can't run away from the fact that um, there was a spiritual significance to the Chimurenga war. Yeah. We can't run away from the fact that people consulted and people that got did us to where yeah. yeah. And I think it's 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 before we can even talk about it at a national level, these are conversations we're supposed to be having internally wega. And a lot of the times yeah. when we're uncomfortable, we like to force and 
project and some of the backlash that I was receiving was um, you have a problem with Jesus and Jesus. Mm. but then <laughs> my question then is okay Iwewe as my friend as my lover as my aunt or my uncle yeah what is your intention for my life like what what is it I want you to be happy I want you to be healthy I want mm. you to be a good person okay so you do realize that <laughs> you want me to be a good person, to be a law-abiding yeah. citizen. But just because I have taken a different step towards my walk, Namwari, then it's like a woo. It raises so an alarm. It raises an alarm, but then, <laughs> then, then takes us back to, isn't that what colonization was? Was an imposition of a stance on belief, right? Yeah. So then now if... You as my fellow black brother, auntie, uncle, you are so triggered by me right. saying, oh, I actually want to bypass this season. Because who knows, yeah. right? We're con continually evolving. Mm. Um, yeah. In what way would the way you are reacting to it? Because the thing is, if we separate emotion and we yeah. can have a meaningful conversation yeah. and it's okay. Oh, okay. Oh, no, that's fine. But the moment another black person is like, hmm, I've got a couple of questions <laughs> and I'm trying to figure it out for myself. Yeah. Um, but then again, when you have that stance, I mean, everything comes with it. They are then the people that have been, you know, um, I, I love because it, in particular, Zimyangu Ndunueda and Tiri Mohondo, got a lot of people that are coming out of their spiritual slash ancestral closet. Yeah. The DMs that I get, like, oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I've been struggling. Who do we talk to? So, which means that we have there's a problem there. There is a need. Where if we are talking about this in little silos, and whether you acknowledge it or not, if you are between the ages of 25, yeah. you're the next crop of leadership for this country. Yeah. And if you think by any, any iota that you're not going to be having to have these conversations in your organizations yeah. or even where the world and the country is going. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be a bit <laughs> tricky for you. And I like that you say that because even um, <clears throat> below national level, um, mm. even within households, right? <laughs> um, yeah. You could say like a father and a mother lead. Uh, what if your child grows up and they have like different beliefs from you? How do you navigate yeah. about? How do you navigate that? Yeah. So it, that was the thing I love, and and the other thing you said is um, strongly believing that uh, you are a a vessel yeah. to to be used. I I genuinely believe that everyone is. Um, mm. I think though sometimes we we don't listen enough. Yeah. <laughs> We don't listen enough to the voice. It's hard, <laughs> guy. It's hard to listen because also you have to be in a conducive state of mind or place yeah. to be able to listen, right? Yeah. And then there's also that thing of you have a choice, right? I could have said no. What do you want me to? But there's a... <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't. The thing is I can't even describe... Some of the promptings that I have, the the sense of urgency, yeah. and the uh, there's just like that push. So that's what I was gonna say is, I, you know what, and and this might sound like ty tyrannical, but I don't think you have a choice, right? I think, I think when you're called, yeah, like you can delay the response for as long as you want, and you even have that's this right. with um with biblical stories, like in, in, the, in, in, in the Christian Bible, right? That's like, true. So many people ignore the call. Mm. And they're like, I can't do this because this and that. And yep. Yeah, it's cool, but they always end up doing it. That's true. <laughs> and it's like... I but feel like when you're just called, you're just called. You and are. when you ignore these calls, uh, sometimes like really tragic things happen. Like, I mean... But why? See, that's a good question. That's a good point you've raised. Yeah. Um, because also... Um, if you look at how you know they unpack ancestry yeah. or issues around ancestry in South Africa, where you know, if you don't answer your ancestral call, some people go nuts, right? Like one yeah. penga. So like, what does that mean? Where is the love in that? Like, if you're my ancestor <laughs> and you thought, this is going to be. So then the thing is, then they, they, they then 
there's then that narrative yeah that then oh, okay that I then like yeah. makes people say ah, like what is yeah. this? like you should be able to to exercise your own your own like free will yeah your own judgment yeah I don't, I don't know if that's so, man. I don't, I don't know. think so. It's but then, and the thing it's... is also, um, <laughs> for the people that this nature of conversation is for, they understand yeah. it. And to the layman or to somebody who has got a, we've all got different paths. Yeah. Um, and not everybody's going to understand it. Look at yeah. it, for example, in South Africa, we had um, the great Baba Credo Mutwa, Mutwa. right? Yeah. Um, do you know how ridiculed he was? And now all the things that he was talking about, they're coming, they're okay. coming to pass. Yeah. So for me, um, <laughs> if it wasn't the fact that I got a grant to do, to, to actually have Go to share this body of work, right, yeah. I was still going to produce this body of work, but it was just going to be for me. Yeah. Because I always wanted, I always wanted to put together a body of work. But God and my ancestors were like, uh-uh, you go. Because I don't budge that, fire, but nobody's <laughs> ever going to, nobody's yeah. ever going to hear this. Yeah. So yeah. In... Sure. Uh, my Mimo, one of the things you talk about yeah. is the difficulty of mm. talking about this journey, right? Yeah. <laughs> because you had this fear that people wouldn't understand. Yeah. And like you've alluded to, a lot of people uh, didn't understand. Conclusively, though, what I would ask you is, would you say you were... You were isolated in this journey or did you end up finding community? So the reason I asked yeah. this is because you said something about people coming to you on IG and so people hold these beliefs yeah. but they can't um, they can't be vulnerable about it. They can't hold them open. No, they can't. Yeah. It's just like um, <laughs> people with when you then have a conversation around sexuality, right? Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. So people are, are in the closet yeah. based on their sexuality. Yeah, yeah, then you've got yeah, people yeah. that are in their ancestral closet, right? Ancestral Where, closet. I like that. Yeah, so this is... <laughs> may Mukundi help you come out your ancestral closet? <laughs> I love that. Like, it's okay, right? Yeah. And I think also, to be fair to myself and um, others, especially when you listen to my Mimo, there's so many scenarios. And I think the part you're talking about is the... Um, have you ever... How did she... I don't even know the lyrics of the head. I don't remember. But it's like something along the, the <laughs> some, some, something along the lines of um, uh, you're transitioning through something you can't tell your tribe. So people yeah, are transitioning. Exactly, exactly. People are transitioning from, you know, I was born female. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's that. So right? there's people that transition. Finding there's that, that transition nature. where for me, when I was young, I always knew there was, there was an enormity to who I am whether it was the Christian route or the traditional route. But I started off the Christian route Christian because route, that's yeah. all I knew. But I've always had a knowing. And the thing is now when you say something like that, um, uh, you have to say it with the, the things I say it from a place of I'm okay with where I'm at in my life and in my journey. Yeah. And the amazing thing with my Mimo is it's also a projection. So that was also projecting my insecurities. Yeah. But guys, when the good ancestor, we did come to Kenya with Zimbabwe. Imam, Imam, Mama, there's no system in Zimbabwe. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, people have this like very like, mocking thing. You know, like when people don't, like sometimes people almost like um, praise you, but in like such a backhanded way. No, like I don't. I don't know if it's like a. I don't know if it's like a zip thing. <laughs> so I have a friend of mine yeah. who's um who's I can't I can't even say on a similar journey yeah. because I'm learning how to play Mbira. Um also part of my research I found out that from my maternal side, Papa ni Magonya Mbira. So for me when I was fifteen, I would hold Mbira and be able to play like intuitively. Intuitively. Uh, I think I had about five Mbiras that I think my parents probably prayed away. But it didn't start with me, hey? Yeah. It clearly didn't start with me. And so I'm on my going Mbira journey because yeah. I want to play Mbira. I mean, heck, if there's a rain making ceremony, sign me up. I, yeah. I'll, I'll be honored to play for my country in that way. Ah. So my friends are another the journey because also these things where I'm not the only one, I'm not going to be the last one, but I'm definitely the person who's made it safe. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and it's not about being cool. It's not about making ancestors cool, yeah. but it's actually about the reverence. <laughs> For me, I'm more about the reverence and not the coolness. Because if you look at in other countries, yeah. there's like, there's just a way of trying to, I, I revere my ancestors so yeah. much. So anyway, my homie on the side, um, I won't mention his name, uh, but his mom, so they had to like do certain rituals and all these things, right? Yeah. Fixing Jumei Mudzinza. So the mom was like, so this, this person's got a prophetic gift, like, right? Yeah. <laughs> So the mom, the mom is like, whenever they're like trying to hang out, whatever, right? Wherever they are, she's like, what's she get? What's she get? <laughs> and what's she get is like, Zimia, she get. Like, who does that? So, <laughs> I just said it's a switch. <laughs> yeah, it's like, are they here? Are they here? Like, let us know. What like, like? <laughs> what are they saying, right? So I found that so hilarious. Um, but yeah, no. When I recorded my Mimo, I, I think it was also for me to just in a way also just like bomb my homies but do you guys something i want to tell you right yeah so uh in that way there was also there was definitely a fear and an insecurity because mukundi is very personal right yeah. as much as there are other layers of other stories that i like dovetail in it it's very very personal and so it was difficult for me yeah. because i was the person in church dgt like Pandaya Namata, right? I was like, but 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 yes, and I was also one of those <laughs> those those people who denounced ancestors, who denounced totem yeah. without questioning. Yeah. Um, and for me, anything that everyone should take, not just from Mukundi but from life, question everything. Yeah. And yeah. where there is yeah. a lack of yeah. questioning, where there is a lack of accountability, whether it be in church or in an organization, or even Kuchua and Kuchua, you know, yeah. there's charlatans in every way. But then also. What I also then realized was, despite the journey that I'm on, there's certain things that I needed to fix within myself, right? So what, are, what people would call an inner child wounds. Yeah. So I had like father wounds, mother wounds, sibling wounds, church wounds, right? <laughs> so um, many layers. So many layers that if you're not careful, you then get swallowed up in mm. seeking a spiritual solution when actually you maybe mm. need therapy or actually you need to be more self-aware and to hold yourself accountable. So these are all of the things that I learned and yeah. put them yeah. in, 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 in the EP. Yeah. So one of the key themes in the EP mm -hmm. is self-discovery. And I am a huge sucker for that, man. I love people who want to look in the mirror, people who um, give themselves grace but also understand that sometimes we are the aggressors. Mm. Um, and when I say we, I don't mean we are the enlightened ones. I just mean oh, we sure, in yeah. the context of <laughs> I'm looking in the mirror. Hey, nini. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I can be the aggressor. Yeah. I can be a victim. Like, it's a problem, that, that, nini. that duality, exactly. It's a, it's a very difficult thing to, to come to terms with, right? To yeah. be like, yeah, maybe I've been self-sabotaging. Like, these past three relationships that fell apart, it wasn't them as I was uh, projecting to the world. Yeah, man. <laughs> because especially with relationships in the modern day where we have uh, social media where we can easily run and be a victim and post uh, passive-aggressive memes <laughs> about <laughs> our exes and whatnot. Uh, <laughs> there is a thing to be said about looking yeah. in the mirror and understanding that maybe it really was me. So for you, hmm. um, there's something you said. It, uh, I don't remember which song it was. I didn't write it down in this question. But it, okay. it, what you said essentially was that uh, your life journey led back to you discovering that everything you needed was within you. Oh, yes, that's Mandiri. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What, what does that mean? What does that mean? How do you, not how do you as advice, but how did you then come to the realization that, hey, maybe, maybe the answers are within me. Sure. Maybe the person I want to actualize is within me. Hmm. Sure. It's a, uh, it happens when it happens. But then yeah. the thing is, um, one of the things that I realized within our culture and even just within, um, 
the church yeah. we don't have tools and i'm saying this in and i'm saying it loosely because i'm in my church and in my tools they say right um yeah. but i realized that there are certain things that from a psychological perspective we don't have words for so we continue to operate in dysfunction yeah. um codependency right we've got codependency um oh, yeah, i've never heard a shana word for <laughs> so but look at look at look at codependency in the context of our families and then codependence in the church you can't make a decision without asking prophet can i put pastor that's a big one that's a big one wow really so there's codependency <laughs> then there's people pleasing right yeah. and, and these are all things that i did not know i was exhibiting and and doing yeah. and then boundaries what do, is there shown a word for boundaries i, I don't think hey, so. <laughs> right? you tend to have like relationships where people take or at least you feel like sometimes and then the, and then you too be, much has been taken and then you become <laughs> resentful exactly, right exactly um and then you don't communicate with it because you have not exerted your boundary and you don't even know what a boundary is or that you need a boundary <laughs> yeah. right um and so for me um i actually needed tools that helped me realize that hey waga meaning yeah ngorne this is just a boundary issue i don't remember all the someone just needs to establish kubabutanga just say no it's a full sentence i don't feel comfortable and that's the thing as well because, yeah um, <coughs> we you know, know. <laughs> you feel it you, you something tells you that man but i didn't know like, what it was and it's like <laughs> <laughs> now i'm like you red flags people call them red flags these days that's yes. that's the word that's the word they love red uh, flags uh, and my body's like well welcome to the party <laughs> took you a decade <laughs> took you a while but then definitely for me what helped me were tools um and my range of tools that helped me was um there's a book by Henry Cloud called Boundaries because again like you said i kept on finding myself in the same situation not learning the lesson um and then feeling like i was a victim but no actually it's just that i had no sense of boundaries but yeah. then the thing is when i then heard good okay it's a boundary issue and then there was a friend of mine who introduced me to Myers Briggs personality yeah, development right i might have taken that if you oh know. my goodness where were you Myers Briggs when i was 30 <laughs> because the thing is everything that i've been through characteristically like down to a t <laughs> is summed up in I mean what tools ga you could just use pay for as well like you saying yeah because the thing is like, I remember I learned this so much earlier so much waste of time potentially <laughs> yeah but um we learn right the, i think the most important thing is is then getting to that place of learning um and then again with me because i believe that um within my journey um yeah. i'm entrusted well i'm entrusted to steward because i believe in stewardship right So I believe that all these opportunities and these platforms that God and my ancestors grant me yeah. are for me to be a person that um is able to publicly do things whether it's in a in a in a, in a really great way yeah. or fails not fails but learns um I allow myself to be a student in front of people. Yeah. Um why that why I was God was chosen to do this I don't know but I've accepted yeah. it. um and i'm okay with it and ngomandio ndio right um so that was that was the other tool the other tool was um may his soul rest in peace yeah. kevin samuels i don't know if you've heard of kevin yeah, samuels that's a, that's a very controversial guy as well oh, oh my, my goodness <laughs> like kid you not even getting terry um yeah. when i heard that he passed away yeah he did earlier this year yeah man yeah. i could yeah. not yeah. believe yeah. it Yeah. I was so hurt. So so this is interesting because Kevin Samuels is a guy that um people either love to love or love to hate. Right? Yes. So I really want to hear like uh, how he was like touching you. Do you know what you call Kevin Samuels in our family? Yeah. So we well, we used to call him Tete Kevi. <laughs> and even amongst my friends, right? Yeah, he kind of gives that like an hinged yeah. Tete energy. You yeah, mean he, he did have like Tete vibes, right? I didn't consume like a lot of him, but now that you say that, I I hear that. Man, and I'm so glad that I I um encountered his content. Yeah. Um after the realization that also I had no sense of self-awareness or accountability yeah. in my life, right? Yeah. Um of course everybody, right? 
everybody's controversial if you amplify the yeah. parts yeah. that don't resonate with you. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things mm-hmm. that will say that I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah did you give him out? This is too but, much. <laughs> um, he was so instrumental in me actually checking myself. Because the thing is, we don't like being checked. I would say, you don't need a problem. Yeah. No, it's, 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 you've got and no. That, that was his thing as well. My goodness. And the thing is, you know, if you listen to <laughs> Kevin Samuels and you haven't done, you know, like, you know, that's a funny, you know, tell me about zero. Like, even I remember listening to him the first times. Um, yeah. uh, who I am today, a large part of it was because I consumed his content. I mean, he was very extreme. Yeah. But then the thing is, I think whenever you consume anything, especially the ones that rub you the wrong way, it means that there's something that you need to work on. What triggers <laughs> you is the lesson, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why, why are you losing your head? Why are you losing your shit? Yeah. Why? Yeah, because, because if someone says something that's just like, uh, a flat out 100% untrue you laugh and you keep walking you're like ah, yes. this is kind of like a crazy thing to say yeah um, so definitely yeah, I hear that that's a very Ke- interesting thing and the thing is Kevin Samuels if you look at it um, in you know people talk about Shadaya and Shadaya's delivery yeah Shadaya and Kevin Samuels oh. yeah same yeah, WhatsApp same gospel essentially I, same I WhatsApp suppose. same WhatsApp group yeah. if you don't want to be held accountable that shit will sting yeah. And their shit will sting you. <laughs> and the thing is, um, you can go around and say what you want to say, record what you want to record, or do whatever it is. Facts are facts. And if you are actually honest with yourself, you can say, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can do it. Why is it paining you? Yeah. And if it's not paining you, um, why are you consuming the content? Like what if kind of yeah? What are you looking for? Yeah. Then? So if it if it if, if, it, it, triggers it, you, speak to you if it triggers you, if it triggers you, many four episodes. Why is it that? And why you do go? you keep coming back to it? Yeah. If you've decided that. Uh, oh no! Thank this you. This is a. This mm. is purely negative. The world doesn't need it because by consuming, you are essentially uh, yeah. enlarging, right? You're enabling that uh, these guys continue yeah. to exist. So, <laughs> rest in peace, um, Tete Kebe. I really wanted to meet him. Just to say thank you. That's um, interesting. Ooh. That's really interesting. Just to say thank you to, 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 to Tete Kebe. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Really like, I can actually trace. And if I had had um, um, a Kevin Samuels experience, it also helped me realize the things that I, the things that the people that I don't appreciate as much. And also the parts of me that are actually amazing, that I didn't value or cherish yeah. but with anyone and everything um i think self-awareness and self-accountability that is what then helped me to circle back to the question of yeah. mandiri so Zuri mandiri is yes i've got all of the, the the tools all of the eloquence and finesse to be where i'm supposed to be and it's a double-edged sword yeah. that also what's within me is the things that are slowing me down yeah. right um and the things that because i remember there's a part in in because i'm having a conversation with aura yeah. where i'm like oh, dude i didn't know that actually i have got all of these things and i didn't know that i needed to heal myself first in yeah. order for me to then walk and then do those um do those those things and then also it's again tools um the power of affirmation right um, I don't know if you've heard of affirmations, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Or the importance of affirmations. Do you know that there are people that have got YouTube channels just based on affirmations? So say, for example, you grew up and you never received validation from your mom, yeah. right? Um, not because your mom was a bad person, but she didn't even know. It just wasn't a style. So there are <laughs> I am affirmations and then there are you are affirmations for a series of so many different things. Yeah. Self-discipline, <laughs> self-love. All of these things, we've got limiting beliefs that if you're not aware of what you're consuming, what you're watching, what you're listening to, can you imagine if you already had limiting beliefs and then you're going to then go consume how confused you are as a person? Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, um, affirmations have helped me a lot because I would listen and, and, and the good thing about them is you've got some of them that are like eight hours. So you can download it on YouTube for those that are downloadable. But then you've got like, you are affirmations that the mind is such a powerful tool it's a tool and it's also a weapon. 
And if you don't know how to regulate your mind, mm. right, um, you will suffer. So, again, those affirmations really helped um, in reshaping and rethinking. I've, I've done and I've achieved a lot of things by Papa Nituma, to my gifts, to my gifts, to my gifts. Mm. And that's what Mandiri then, um, then became. So it was my voice and yeah. then my voice again um, through aura. So it was that complex... Mm. Yeah. Yourself, essentially. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I think I don't think we, we give each other or we give ourselves enough credit for what we've managed to live through. Yeah, grace. Only because <laughs> yeah, grace because we don't know the words. Two collaborations on the project. Mm -hmm. Uh and there's more, but two yeah. that we get to hear like vocally. Sure. Uh Zura. Uh huh. And Aura. Oh, Zua and Aura, I forgot that we were recording, so I looked back. Yes, Zua and Aura. <laughs> and Aura. Um, yeah. why, why was it important for you to get these voices on the project? Well, Zuma was because um, a couple of years ago, I was a presenter for Dries on Heart and Soul. Yeah. And somebody recommended oh, her. Yes. Somebody oh. recommended her. I had, uh, had a specific segment that I curated and dedicated to voices that had not been heard. Um, and she came through and yeah. she blew me away. She did the rendition, yeah, Steve McCorney and Diende. Yeah. Like, I messed up the controls because I was not ready <laughs> for that. Blown away. <laughs> Zua. Like, I got the photos. Even like my reaction, I was just like, who are you? Um, and I always have this thing, like, I'm, I'll make a mental note of people that um, I'll meet yeah. and I'll be like, I'm going to work with you one day. And in my mind, Zua was like, I'm going to work yeah. with you one day. Yeah, that's dope. Um, and then for that's my Mimo, um, it was just obvious because also when you think of a lullaby, she's got such a rich, deep voice. So yeah. when you then hear that, it's very soothing. Because the, the, the lyrical content within the spoken word is so hard. Yeah. So you want something more you know, so ah, it's like the contrast. Yeah, the, the contrast. Yes. And but it was purely because of that. Um no, Zua listen. It's brilliant, man. Like, I can't wait to perform it. To with perform her. it with her. Like yeah. even just like performing the E P. Um yeah. I won't say I'm not, I'm not ready for it. Yeah. But I think I need to fully recover from the intensity of Rolling production out. and and putting it out and putting everything in yeah before because i put everything so like <laughs> poured yourself into i poured it. myself so at the moment I'm in the, I'm in the season of replenishing myself yeah i'm and allowing things to flow organically yeah because i feel like um you then get that thing okay well an opportunity will come are you ready for it can Energetic. You? <laughs> You're sleepy. <laughs> no, no, not sleepy. But you know, you need you to like to build up. I need to re recharge. Yeah, but, and also because I'm not like your jamba, my speaker type of performer. Yeah. So I'm very intentional. Yeah. Um, and there's an energy that I am coming to share with people. So I'm going to go on to by 35 percent. It's not yeah, good for. It yeah, it will be like um second apart. song. Sorry guys, so if you see me do this, <laughs> it means my vocal bash is out. No, 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 no. But I did love the, um, uh, the performance uh, you you gave. I can't. Can you even call it a performance? No, it wasn't it, a performance. It kind of was. Hey, you see how like how much you love it. It's the reason we're doing this yeah. because it it spoke to me so much and it was it was right at, yes at the it National was gallery. it was even a fusion right because we were commemorating africa new year, new year yeah. right yeah. and the thing is i got there a little bit late so i wasn't sure what was done how can you celebrate african new year right yeah we we did i don't know because that's the thing i think we did yeah i think we did i think we did I think so we then did. there was like well you know kuti Pamuno, she got him. Magadi, magadi, to the point, magadi, and did it yeah. at the beginning and then at the end, right? Um, and so I was going to perform with Zimuino and Dinoida. The thing is, I wasn't even going to perform that day. Oh, for real? No, I, the, I don't know. You know, they were like, hey, that's kind of, hey. Yeah, that's. 
it kind of felt like that. Yeah, because uh, I, I didn't have... Were bringing people on. Yeah, yeah because I, I was not... Um, no, I was just really excited about the new year. I mean, I was enjoying my toy, Angu. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, they're like... Mm. And the dog here just screened as well, I think, right? Yes. I think that's what I was going to say, is that uh, the energy in that place was also just really cool. It Before was. You... See, it was a very, an amazing space. And I think now what, then, what that then was for me was now I know that when I do perform, that's the opening. You need... That's that opening, right? Because what was also very trippy was um, when I then asked you guys to lead us, the men to lead us, yeah. and then having the woman, like that sound was like, wah, 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 like it sounded really hectic, yeah. um, but it sounded beautiful. Yeah. So um, I forgot the question. We were talking about the collaboration. Oh, yes, collaborations. <laughs> there you go. Um, so you just talked about Zua. And then Aura. Yeah. I met Aura. Well, I mean, I knew of Aura. What year were you in? 2022. Yeah. So I could easily say 2009, 10, um, when there was the book cafe. You know what? In 2009, I was like in sixth grade. Really? That's like a long <laughs> time ago. Yes. I do know of book cafe though. Yeah, that was yeah. a cool so, place. Aura would do spoken word. She would perform on stage. She would host all of these different experiences. Um... And having on the EP was just to honor and acknowledge the, 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 the yeah, the pace that she set for people like me to then come. Because yeah. usually I would like to say, oh, okay, I want to give a shout out yeah. to <laughs> this person who was in the 1920s. Blah, blah, blah. No, it was important for me to acknowledge her um, and to have her part of that project because yeah. she really did pave the way for so many people. Um, and then Fungai Nengari, the producer. Yeah. There was no one else in the world that I was going to work with as a producer outside Fungai. Why is that? And because Fungai, well, well I mean, you no, heard I mean, the EP, the but I know, I know, I get that. Crazy. Uh, the music is crazy. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> but th there's something <laughs> remarkable about Fungai Ningari that yeah. I am so honored to have his hand in this, right? Yeah. I met Fungai 11 years ago at Showtime Studios. And. The first time we met was the first time both of us were being recorded on a track. So oh. Fungai did the vocals and I did the spoken word for a song called Looking for Love yeah. by Reverb, Reverb 7. And then we then went on to perform it in South Africa and then at Zimbabwe Fashion Week. Yeah. But again, also, it's one of those things where my... I only did one song I was like... <laughs> So God. <laughs> and I mean, I still have people from like, um, even down to the backing vocalists. The backing vocalists are, well, two of them at least, yeah. are uh, two babes who were my seniors in high school. That when they sang, I was That's like, cool. one day, we need, to, we need to work with you. That's um, so intentional. I love that. I love that. That's like yeah. speaking things into existence type of manifesta. manifesta. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that was, um, yeah, that was, that was the story. And then Fungai then, you know, chose the, uh, session musicians. Yeah. And it just so happened that, uh, the person who did keys or yeah. piano is somebody that I also was like, one day, oh, but I just cool. never got to a chance to do that. And that's Ane Un. And yeah, Ane Un is, is brilliant. He's yeah. Brilliant. I, I meet him in a couple of uh, events. Yeah. He's a cool guy. And that's how that... He's on the project as well. That's yes, he's the one who does um, the keys. And then there's Ndomu Peishe Chipeno. She's a choreographer. No, I don't know. Multi-instrumentalist. She's, She's amazing. Dope. I met her when I was hosting So Creative. She was a dancer. Yeah. But she just always used to have like to my kids, you know, between work. I mean, I was like... And the thing is, um, even all of these people, right... They're God chosen. As much as I'm like, yeah, this is very much a. a Fate. Fate. I have an audience of one. Okay, well, audience of one. Dimari. And then obviously, you know, I've got the ancestors and everybody else in between. But everything that I do is for an audience of one. Yeah. So in everything that I do, I'm like, come who, whatever. Who do you want? Um, for what you want, the purpose of this body of work to be. So like, so you know, God and I were in agreement on, on everything. Yeah. I and so that. here we I are. That. I love that. I love that. <laughs>
what what informed uh, the sound that accompanied so, your words on this project? Because everything else up to this point that we've discussed yeah. seems very intentional. Yes. So I'm assuming even the sound you were going for yep. was very intentional. Is that something that you can put into words? Yes, it was very intentional. And I think you would need to have um, a separate conversation with Fungai. Yeah. Because he's the brains and the brilliance behind that. Yeah. Um, and he's also an amazing teacher, which is why I say I'm so honored to work with him. Because um, for me, when I put the EP together, in my mind, I'm like... I'm not really faffed if it gets on radio, yeah. but it has to be on the Wakanda Forever soundtrack. So this is, ah, this is the, 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 the vision, and this it. is the picture that Fungai helped paint for me. Yeah. Um, and that's why there's that intentionality and there's that intensity, because you need to be able to hear that ding, 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 off to yeah, the window, really, right? Very um, strong. <laughs> yes, it's very <laughs> for strong. For lack of a better term. Um, yeah. Because again, also we're saying, well, it's not just an EP, it's a, a piece of a bigger puzzle when it comes to the Zimbabwean content story. Yeah. So looking at, well, how can we get placed in movies? How can we then collaborate with galleries and museums? That yeah. if there is something that speaks to it, because I mean, the one thing that really upsets me is when I go to an exhibition um, and then the exhibition is focused on something, I don't know, like Kintsugi or brokenness. Yeah. And then Murizuka Mapian. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with like, a piano. Yeah, but, but I mean... Read the room. <laughs> let's start there. <laughs> so um, the, the, the focus for, for me, even in the work that I shall do, is if I get to perform, great. But let me just say it off the bat. I won't be performing a lot. Yeah. I want to be more recording and creating those experiences that um, enhance cinematography, right? So that was the yeah. direction for... Every single song was placement. Are we getting into a movie? Are we getting into a documentary? Because yeah. also looking at it from the business perspective, right? Because I work and I do other things. For me to be full time performing, what not, what not. No, and also sense. just the 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 enormity of the body of work yeah. is not something that will allow. I mean, sure you could try it, right? But it's not something that would allow for. Okay, this Saturday we're at Pikicha. Sunday we're at... Sunday yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. I was actually going to ask about that in terms of like... <laughs> because I would imagine that you are, you know, going into... For some of the content that's there, you're going mm. into very like vulnerable and deep places. Mm. And so to be repeatedly knocking down that same door could really become something that just like grinds you down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... <laughs> we call in the mental health. <laughs> and then, 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 then like spins into other things, right? Yeah. Like you know how organizations will then have like, oh no, please come. Oh, you, I don't try to finish the gender. And yeah, then you then yeah, become like that. you become the gender yeah, spoken yeah, word yeah, artist. Yeah, I can mm. see that. I can see that. Yeah. And they're like always like perform until we honor my, our mothers at every woman's thing. And yeah, it's then it's like, Oh Mother's Day. Ruta get your yeah. and Then it's like, no, if you actually listen to the lyrics, that don't let the title fool you. Right, <laughs> until we honor the mothers. Ah, yes, it's so nice. It's honor the mothers. Then, do we talk about the fact that our mothers also go through, you know, forced rape in their marriages, yeah. right? Yeah. The rape within the war, yeah. the, 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 the miscarriages that they go through. Yeah. Also, even if until we honor the mothers, I'm not just focusing on our mothers, our children, but there's well. mother there's nature. So... <laughs> until you honor mother nature, Ngurungura Samarara everywhere. Are you kidding me? Mother Nature yeah. is turning on us, and we yeah. don't realize that all of these national, um, these weather patterns, that's Mother Nature saying, ma, 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 ma <laughs> right? And then you look at the, the context of mother in terms of Mother Africa. We have not um, allowed our mothers, even in our homes, to nurture us as much as we need for society to be stable. So yeah. then, to then also, because we realize that um, the body of work also commands conversation, so you can't then be going to have conversations. Imagine you're like Friday, sundown. Two days, exactly. Two days. And then my, 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 my sundown was on point to my drinks. Was it Have you ever? They yeah, ask these hard yeah, questions, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. still figuring out what that would look like. Um, but then also, even if I show you my vision board for the year, yeah. um, and just for my life in general, the one, two things that stood out. Number one, yeah. or I don't know if you know her, but this musician called Lauren Hill. Yeah. Right? Of course, 
Of course, man. I'm not that young. <laughs> so, there's the miseducation of Lauren Hill. Yeah. So, every time I went to the studio, I had the mentality of Lauren Hill's miseducation of Lauren Hill. It was yeah. the greatest of all time. I hear that, that a lot. Like, I've not listened to it yet, but I hear people call it the greatest. And so, for album. me, my mindset was if Mukundi is the only body of work that I'm going to do, it shall outlive me. Like, Miseducation of Lauren Hill, mm. but also the the intentionality behind that. Can't wait for you to listen to that. Oh yeah. my goodness, I'm like so excited on your behalf. I'm so excited <laughs> as well. <laughs> and then I then also had um, and then I also have a photo of Adele. Absolutely love um, Adele. Adele is unapologetic about her gift, yeah. but then she's also very OCD about it, about <laughs> um. She respects the gift. I think when it comes to Adele, it's a gift and not a craft. Um, and so there's also that level of reverence. And also Adele is somebody that I would love to collaborate with. Let's it. go. Like yeah, to see that. yeah, no, but like, can you imagine collab um, Adele? I mean, she, there's a spoken word um, element on her yeah. latest oh, work, well. right? Yeah. But can you imagine Adele within African spoken word? Monofenda. <laughs> Those vocals would just hit that'll so be, different. It'll be so, it's like a nut job. It would not yeah. make sense. But then also, I just no, really but it, I respect think it would. her. It would be so cool as well because yeah. even just like, like natural, strategically as well, it's just like, it, it brings a different lens to African stories as well. It's, it's yeah. just so, it's layered. It's just so layered. It would be so cool. And also because be so, so cool. I respect her vulnerability, right? She's been very... Yeah, like even Adele from, her, from uh, that previous album. Adele and Tokuti, it's kind of oi treish. If you don't send Tokuti sang as well, I mean, sure she can make work she, for it. Yeah. But then to but, be but able still, to to just there are a lot of people who sing and they don't live what they sing. No, <laughs> no, I've got so much um so much respect for yeah. Adele and Lauren Hill. Yeah. If I were to if I were to share a stage, <laughs> or even like. The thing is, even as now, <laughs> as a session, I think it would be so trippy. Like, you know, have you ever heard of people that get high without smoking weed? Yeah. I would be yeah, high without smoking. Those surreal, if it transcendent was experiences. Tandi Swamazwai. Also, yeah. my ancestral reverence has uh, largely been influenced by, by her and her journey. Yeah. There was Mam Usim Klongo. She's late. Um, but I listened to a lot of their music. And it was like... It, was, it just spoke to you. It's like there. So if I were to share a stage with um, Tandiswa, King Ta, yeah. right? Adele, Somi yeah. from Nigeria. Yeah. Um, is Somi from Nigeria, King? I don't know. Uh, Ginger Me Slowly. I actually don't know. I actually don't know, to be fair. I don't yeah. know. But Somi, yeah. um, Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill, can't go and do shake kids. Have you seen this <laughs> clip? Of Lauren Hill, of Nicki Minaj when she meets Lauren Hill. Oh, and she was. Well, I mean, I understand yeah. how she took that, but <laughs> but I would be pretty trippy yeah, like that, was, probably. Yeah. Um, and who else? So King Ta, Adele, Lau Ooh, Sarah Tavares. Next question. Otherwise, we'll be here for another hour. Yeah, maybe as we as we close off, right? And and this is a question that I love and hate at the same time. Okay. So I love it because as people who work on things, mm. you put this out on August 31st, as you said, right? Uh, that's when it was launched, uh, mm. came into the world, sure. people are still taking it in, and then people are still taking it in, but someone is asking you what's next. Sure. So it's such a weird question in that sense, right? <laughs> but like you said, yeah. um, you've gotten like... Uh, positive responses that kind of indicate that there's work to be done yeah so what what's next for you even if it's not necessarily music like what where are you leaning what are you thinking sure. about I, I think it's a very important question right yeah because it's like you can't be a cliffhanger in people's lives that's why people <laughs> are having issues <laughs> um ghosty yeah, yeah, hey, ghost, I, ghost I the yeah like <laughs> ghost the audience um, but also just something that I didn't touch on. Yeah. I also did a, conducted a, an online survey and also just like con had conversations like this before. Yeah. Um, and the feedback that I received was, for example, um, this was more in, in line with 
what is our understanding of who we are, what our culture is, where we're going, where we're from, what yeah. influences and shapes. Um, and one of the questions was, what stage or what situation in your life did you learn something that was cultural that you didn't know? Some people was Rora, when they're getting Rora, after the death of a parent, after the yeah, death of a sibling, the yeah. death of a husband, right? Because that's when usually all the surprises come. <laughs> where they're like, the things you have to do. <laughs> um, we know you're Christian, but you know, and they're like, all of these things that people are like, this was the culture jolt. Shock. <laughs> that's it. This is the culture shock. Um, and because of the variety of responses that I received, yeah. um, my own research of the process, it was just too much for me to try and condense and put in an EP. So I sprinkled some of those things, right? Yeah. Um, for example, one of the questions was, when you hear the word ancestor, what are the words that comes to mind? There's demonic, yeah. there is scared, there is outdated. Especially that. <laughs> and then um, and I addressed that in Tirimondo. Um, but what Mukundi is, Mukundi is page one, phase one, right? Yeah. Because the thing is, this is a continuing conversation. Yeah. So the next stage um, after Mukundi is, I'm working on a podcast. And so what that podcast is going to be is they're now stripping and unpacking those. Because Mukundi is heavy. Um, it's a lot to... I don't, I, I don't even <laughs> listen to it. Like, I've actually taken a break from listening to it, right? Yeah. Um, so then it's then, like, unpacking those threads. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's a publisher. And she's like, you know, because also when they're at the listening party, I had a, a survey before, because I believe in the importance of data-driven narratives. Yeah. As much as there's a huge opportunity for Africa to create content, let's create content that speaks to what mm. the need is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, then we can sprinkle it with our own little, you know, mm, hundreds and thousands, that line, yeah. whatever that is. Um, and then, then did also a question and answer um, survey at the listening party, how people rated the songs, what they would have loved to think. So I'm still trying to figure out what that will look like in terms of um, continuity yeah. from Mukundi to the, the podcast. Next, yeah. It might not necessarily have the same name. And then possibly a book. And then... You know, yeah. how do we then curate these conversations and experiences? But I think something that will be more manageable for me will be a podcast. Because again, the, the nature of an event, there's so much happening. So you'll come to an event and, ah, next thing we're going to a festival, ah, I don't agree, mm. gross, you've come to Zimbabwe, and then you yeah. forget. Yeah. But the thing with the podcast is that you're able to consume it. In bits and pieces, you can keep it. Yeah. Can... And then also, ultimately, I mean, I want my work to be critiqued in university i yeah, want it to then be it, yeah. put into like a, a, a book because i think the quality of what we shared in those conversations yeah. are important to unpack um and and also the intentionality of the sound must be for film documentary then the conversation must be intellectually stimulating for it to be discussed at like even thesis level, yeah. that there should be thesis is written about Mukundi because what inspired that thinking yeah. and then the really extensive research was Janelle Monet, and I would love to work with her again. Yeah, she's dope as well. Right? She's, she's dope. Um, I don't remember what the name of the album is. The one with, I like that, I think her latest album, her la mm. la last offering, was um, also unpacked at... Um, What's this university in Atlanta? The historical black college is it an HBCU, where mm, they I'm wrote not, about I'm not entirely sure. yeah. So they 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 wrote about like a thesis about Janelle Monae yeah. and what this is, and I would love to to work with <laughs> it because her mind. So the thing is, even going in, my mind is if this is the only body of work that I'm going that to I'm do, it's going to you yeah, know evolve no, into no. so many so many so many other things so yeah. definitely look out for a podcast um coming to you soon <laughs> loading <laughs> uh yeah loading a book i don't know i'll probably will do a book yeah. um <clears throat> but i think i think the podcast will still feed it because the thing is it's, it's so vast and it's so broad yeah. um and then the thing is also mukundi was 
the culmination of like a cycle, a life cycle, which is about 11 years. Because it was exactly 11 years ago this year that I was like, oh, one day I want to do an EP. So Lord knows what else is going to transpire over the next oh, couple of years. Yeah. But um, in the meantime, <laughs> enjoy Mukundi and... Yeah. Yeah, just like give yourself grace to ask yourself those uncomfortable questions. Um, create spaces for yourself and then for others. I mean, and if it's difficult for you to to create that space or to have those conversations, I mean, I do give private talks. I still have like, I have families that are reaching out to me and saying, please, can you come and help us break the ice? Yeah. So if you need an icebreaker to speak at your event, to speak to your students, yeah, sign me up. Well. That's because dumb. the thing is, it's, it's, it's then it's, it's, if you listen to it, then you're like, you may not necessarily have the conviction to say mm, what I say. Yeah. <laughs> and then now when you then tell your friend, hey, you guys, you know, I was listening to this, this EP. Ah, it's no, it's no, 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 it's, it's fiction. fiction. But I'm happy, yeah. to, I'm happy yeah. to break the ice for people that need hand-holding. Because I don't know it all. Yeah. But what I do know is that I'm not uh, ashamed of the lessons that got me to this part. And where I'm going. So let's learn together. Fantastic, man. Thank you so much for you welcome. Doing this. You're welcome. It's a wholesome conversation. And cheers. <laughs> to the next <laughs> eleven years. <laughs> mm, definitely to the next eleven years. I think it's safe to say that I live my life in cycles that I just didn't know that that's what it was. Yeah. And now that I'm aware, at least now my next cycle is, is it's going to be exciting. I can't wait to see what you're doing. What's up? Yeah, <gasps> I love that. I love that. I love that. That, that um, just letting life surprise you. Yeah, but like, what other way do you want to do it? Like, I actually don't yeah. get, okay, wait, I'm lying. Because yeah. the thing is, we're all like, <laughs> we're all created different. Or it's like, ah. No, it's no like, the thing with that is it's scary. Why? Oh, it's just scary because... Um, it breaks that illusion of control. But then the thing is, my thing is, if you've seen things eventually work out, yeah. or if you've why seen God you and your ancestors it? come through for you before, why can't you trust it again? Oh, also, I need to touch on the fact that yeah. ever since I started this journey, my mental health has been amazing. Amazing. And so, and whatever it is that you're going to do, prioritize yeah. your mental health. Yeah. So whatever journey you're on, if it's working for you, if it's yeah. legal, continue. <laughs> go in. Or go in. deeper. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> you're welcome. You Thank you so much. for six days, I think. You have so much knowledge. I uh, love the you. album. EP, man. Damn, I keep calling it an album. Love yeah, the EP. So you're prophesying my album with featuring no, keep, Adele, I featuring Love and Hill, featuring Janelle Monáe. No, I, re I receive that. And all that. the movie placements in the world. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thank you so much, Nintendo. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to everybody who watched. Thank you.